back everybody to the Unity for J hashtag protect Julian all weekend long online vigil in support of Julian Assange and WikiLeaks. My name is Susie Dawson. I'm an activist, a journalist and the president of the Internet Party of New Zealand. I am really pleased and excited to have with me a fellow Kiwi, an awesome chick who's been doing amazing things over the last year with the movement that she calls the Free Assange NZ movement. Her name is Alex Hills. Hi, Alex. Hi, how are you, Susie? Great Thank you for here. joining us so late Thank on a Saturday night. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> yeah, it was how a real pleasure is, to be invited. <laughs> how is my homeland? Uh, yeah, sort of struggling, struggling at the moment with the news. I think um, a number of people are very concerned, um, wanting to do actions. I've had people calling me up, asking what's going on next. And um, I've been sort of harking back to those old emergency protests that we planned a long time ago with about, uh, I think it was 29 cities and 11 countries all, all together that had agreed to um, put down a venue and a place for an emergency action for Assange. But I've also been trying to focus on um, attacking um, Maurice Payne, asking questions of the Foreign Affairs Office um, while we wait for what's going to happen next. And I understand no, that. I did it's hear, I, I did hear from Greg Barnes, which is one of Julian's Australian lawyers, that a dialogue has now been opened with Payne. Yes, I've heard that too. And I think that their, their office was getting an undue amount of calls, which is really good to hear. They were really quite frustrated by the time I called and I must have only been that the fifth person. <laughs> but, uh, that it was great is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Um, can, you, can you just step us through, like, when did you first hear about WikiLeaks and Julian? What made you care about this issue so much that you actually decided to take action? And then could you just um, fill people in on what has been happening in New Zealand with the Free Assange Gen Z movement over the yep. last 12 months? Yeah. Well, it's hard to know when WikiLeaks started to affect me deeply. Um, I guess the truth has always been uh, interesting to me. Um, I, I think during the Bernie campaign, that's when I really started to see the, the, the sham that was politics and started to get really involved trying to help there, um, not realising, I guess, what, what happened to Bernie and what was going to happen with Hillary. But um, I that's where I really started to get motivated to start sharing online. And I did that for a number of years and got increasingly frustrated with, um, I guess, the algorithm, the, the, the way that... And I believe, like you, you know, you talked to me about this, um, that New Zealand is a bit of a guinea pig when it comes to trying out new things like censorship. And I noticed during the Bernie campaign that all my political posts were being quashed. I had zero likes, but then anything about a kitten or something stupid was getting 50 likes. And I just thought that isn't about people's interest. This is actually something that's being... Um, done to our posts and when I told American friends about that on the Bernie group they they thought I was being uh, ridiculous but actually now I think most people realize that that is what's going on and perhaps they just brought it in in New Zealand first and it really outraged me I mean I had a, a post pinned artificially to the top of my Facebook which was a sarcastic post about Hillary and Syria and pipelines and it, said, it started off with vote for Hillary so da 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 but it was completely sarcastic and it got pinned to the top of my timeline for three months. And in the end, I had to delete it. It was the only way I could remove it. But obviously, someone decided that that had to stay at the top of my timeline. And I don't know how that even happened. It was just a personal page. So that was really frustrating. And I'm seeing, I guess, seeing the disappointment in all these progressive people thinking that, that there was someone finally speaking for them. And um, when it all came crashing down, uh, it just enraged me all the more. And the fact that um, what had been revealed about um, uh, the, the, the Delta politics, the, the Vault 7, the spying, all the, all, the whole complement of things that WikiLeaks has re revealed, uh, I started to get a little bit wiser on that. And, and it, yeah, it, it enraged me and I, I wanted to do more. Um, and I think back uh, June last year, I was asking around in the Internet Party in New Zealand, which I've been a member of um, for a while, I was asking around if anyone was doing an Assange protest for the global protests that were planned for June 19th, which was the six-year anniversary um, of Julian's um, Japan the Embassy. And no one, no one was organising anything. And I, um, my first thought was, well, 
I guess I'll just have to just arrange something, even if it's just me with a sign or a couple of people, it's better than nothing, at least we can say New Zealand's on the map <laughs> in terms of global protests. And so that that's kind of how I got really heavily involved, I guess. Yeah. Um, so yeah. And you guys have done amazing stuff. So can you take right. us through yeah. each of the things that you've achieved? Well, we, we just issued a video uh, in line with the one year anniversary of, of um, Julian's gagging in isolation. Uh, and we thought a good a good marker for that would be um, free Assange and Z's actions for the last year, sort of a couple of seconds of each. Um, and I guess I'll, I'll go through it chronologically. So we had we had the, the six year anniversary um, um, protest that was going on all around the world. Um, I believe there was about 20 cities involved. Um, so what we did is we, we did a march. We started off at the Australian High Commission. Um, we had a little bit of a, um, um, a few speakers there, including Paul Brute, who's in the Green, um, Green Party councillor. Um, we had someone from the World Socialist um, group, a journalist there, uh, who was speaking as well. Um, we had Greg, who I hope might be able to get here tonight, but he wasn't able to. Um, who's been helping me with Free Assange and said, um, in particular with the as, um, we put in a petition for Julian's asylum in New Zealand um, as we felt that maybe New Zealand could up the trend of Five Eyes and try and do something um, positive. At least what we asked, all we asked is that um, could New Zealand Parliament discuss the concept of asylum for Assange and they refused to do it. We got an answer back from them after a lot of trouble um, getting signatures that everyone seemed to get server errors when they tried to sign. Um, and we got an answer back from them which said um, it's not within the New Zealand jurisdiction to even discuss the idea of asylum for Assange, which um, I feel is ridiculous. Um, I believe legally perhaps he needs to be on New Zealand soil in order to formally apply for asylum, but it doesn't preclude you from discussing it in Parliament. So that was a real progress answer we got there. But anyway, um, we decided to do that petition um, when we did a, a birthday celebration for Julian for his 47th birthday. Um, so that was July last year and we put out a bunch of um, candles um, at the Beehive um, and we spelled out free Assange. And we had a lot of people come and talk to us, a, a number of people come and help us with that as well, which was lovely. Um, and that image went completely crazy around the world. Um, and one of the people that saw it, I, I put instructions of how we nailed plastic cups into the grass and then we put the tea cups and tea lights in there, the lit literal candles in there because we, you know, Wellington's windy. Um, and so I put the instructions onto Discord and BD Honeybee saw them in London and has been doing um, her wonderful candle vigils ever since. And I think some of the people would have seen on the Rutley feed um, when we first got news of the possible expulsion, um, she put out no expulsion and that was reading nicely and clearly on the Rutley feed, which was wonderful to see. Um, so yeah, I was really, really proud that just this little action at the Beehive, which had this image that went around the world and then someone actually took it on board and started doing it at the embassy. So I felt really, um, really overwhelmed with that actually. Um, and then a little bit later, uh, Chelsea Manning came and we had Australia banning Chelsea Manning. Um, and I believe her, her talks had to be held via live feed from New Zealand. So it was encouraging that New Zealand was letting that happen and letting her talks go ahead. But it was awful to see this grotesque censorship going on in Australia. So you were calling out for Unity 4J days at the time. I think it was September. And um, we decided to um, take a little kind of unusual protests around the same um, embassies. We went to the Australian High Commission, the US Embassy, followed by the British High Commission. But this time, Greg and I went with me and a hula hoop in my violin and um, I just played a song at each uh, embassy and just for a laugh, really, we recorded the whole lot within about 40 minutes because we were on the run. Um, now, let's see, I did... Um, Walsing Matilda at the Australian High Commission, I played the national anthem for uh, the US at the US Embassy, much to the 
disenchantment of the security there. And then I did the Benny Hill theme tune outside um, the British Embassy, and that was a lot of fun. Uh, we screamed at them for a while there. I threatened to burn my passport because I am actually British, Australian, and, <laughs> and New Zealand now. So I'm kind of triple, triple national. Um, and yeah, I, it dawned on me that perhaps burning my passport was the next stage um, publicly in front of the press or something. But anyway, that, that was Unity for J Day. Um, what else did we do? We had a couple of songs. Uh, me and my mate Timothy, who's in Free Assange, New Zealand, he's the singer songwriter. We came up with a Julian Assange song that went quite crazy. Um, and then at Christmas time, even better, Alex Taylor in London, who is the very famous Free Assange violinist who is often appearing outside the embassy there and doing music. He believes music has the chance to um, heal all these kind of wounds. Um, and he was actually taken off the pavement by um, an armed task force. Um, they call them the tactical response team. Uh, who removed him just because he was playing Walsing Matilda outside the embassy in London. Um, and so I contacted Alex Taylor and, and, and said, you know, you've inspired me to push ahead and do my own activism from New Zealand with my violin. Thank you for that. And uh, he gave me a song and he said, hey, do you want to, um, this is a bit empty, this song, do you want to try and play another part along with it? Um, and so I played a, a duet along with Alex Taylor's song and this beautiful singing voice of Maria, um, I don't know how to pronounce her last name, Malveska, Malveska, I think it's called. Um, and we produced a song called Let the Light In, um, which I shared on Christmas Eve. And uh, I think uh, about 250,000 people saw it in one day, um, my tweet, and I couldn't actually believe it. <laughs> Um, not only that, then Kathy Vogan um, saw the video and loved it and the song so much that she wanted to make um, a, a recut of my video because I'd done it very much, my, one of my first video efforts, efforts uh, video editing efforts. Um, and so she re-released it in January with her own amazing video, which just brought it to life, really. Um, and then last but not least, uh, Timothy and I were going to try and uh, get ourselves to politics in the pub to Sydney in Sydney together um, so that we could not only do that Let the Light In song but also that we might be able to do the other Free Assange song um, and we weren't able to raise in the short time we had the funds for me to get a flight to Sydney and him but um, we did manage to get one flight so I managed to go. I got to meet Joe Laurier, I got to meet Cathy Vogan, I got to meet the wonderful Australian um, activists I've been working with online. Um, which was just brilliant. I, I can't tell you how great it was. I met Simon Toth. Um, yeah, we had a dinner together. It was it was really beautiful. So, um, and I got to play Walsing Matilda at the end of that show, which was live streamed on. Um, and then mm, Julian's mother saw it, and we've been chatting on um, Twitter a little bit, and she was so moved by the whole idea. Um, that she uh, she says that she's delivered it to someone in London, a trusted contact that is actually taken to Julian at the embassy. And then I pretty much broke down at that point. I couldn't actually believe it. So, um, yeah, I was uh, really honoured for that to have happened, really. For, for Julian to know that there are people all around the world. We might be few and far between, but there's a hell of a lot of us collectively. And we're all desperately, desperately working um, as hard as we can to, to free him. So that's my uh, history of the year. <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely spectacular. And I'm and I'm so proud because one of the things that really haunted me with me being away from New Zealand was feeling like I couldn't do anything in my home country for yeah. Julian and for WikiLeaks. And yeah. you guys, I felt you you brought me a lot of solace last year knowing that there was caring Kiwis that were getting out there and doing exactly the type of stuff that I wanted to do. You know, getting out, doing the candle actions, doing the music, hitting up the embassies yeah. and taking the photos and, and the video footage and stuff. I mean, that's exactly the kind of thing that I was doing in, in New Zealand. And I really felt a massive sense of relief to know that um, you, you're picking up the baton and running with it in a oh, big way. 
Mm. Well, I'm really, really, really glad that we can help in any way and make you feel any more attached to home, that, you know, in any way that we can, because I hate to think you're over there. It's awful that you're not in New Zealand, <laughs> because we need you, really, um, quite badly. And um, uh, Timothy's son has been translating some of the materials into Te Reo, um, Te Reo Māori, and um, we've actually just been working on a, a, new, a new song in Te Reo Māori. We're trying a political song now and today we'll, we'll let you know if that goes well that's fantastic <laughs> and i heard i also heard that there is going to be a haka um at yes. the embassy in london yes. yes i believe this is a new zealand pr consultant uh that's associated with helping assange and i don't know anything about him he's a bay of plenty iwi or, or connected to uh, which is interesting because Timothy is a bay of plenty iwi too. So we'll see if we can um, find out if there's any connection there. There usually is some fucking papa connection, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. I've been teaching my kids actually to do the haka over here. Yeah. <laughs> Post Christchurch, we've um, they've been watching a lot of them online, and I feel yeah. like a, a duty to teach my kids at least kamati kamati kamati. Yeah. Um, if nothing else. Yeah, well, um, I believe it's 19th of June that that's planned for. Again, the I guess it will be the seventh year anniversary of his time at the embassy. It's shocking. To th it's just incredible to think it's been that long. It's yeah. virtually without precedent. Yeah. The situation, the situation that he's facing, um, and as much as I'm upset at what happened this week. I actually am quite relieved about it because I feel like it's reminded everybody of the urgency and yeah. it's reminded everybody not to um, be complacent. One of the things I worry about, though, I guess, as we keep on responding to these urgent things and then the, it, all, it all dies down, is that are we going to be suffering from the boy who cried wolf? scenario are they trying to wear us down in these kind of emergencies in that we keep on responding and then people lower their expectations each time and that that does worry me a little bit and I, I'm going to do everything I can to stop that from happening but um, you know I can see that if it keeps on happening that people are going to start to lose their um, in, I guess you know Someone is um, from Vienna and Austria and they're saying they feel a bit frustrated listening to all the amazing things that have happened to support Julian in New Zealand. They want to know what they can physically do in Austria. I can tell you one of the most simple actions that can have the biggest effect. That is go and buy some chalk, some sticks of chalk, go to the busiest commercial district in Vienna, somewhere with the highest possible foot traffic and just chalk hashtag protect julian on yeah. the street yeah. put hashtag unity for jay on the street if mm. you do that you can you can influence tens of thousands of people or more yeah. just from yeah. something so simple and it's a legal think, action you're not going to yeah. get in trouble for doing it it's not going to cost you more than a couple of euro yeah um, i see it so many people effective. I see so many people saying, oh, I'm in Mexico or I'm in Chile. There's nothing on here. I feel so ashamed. And I feel like they're like me, but, you know, a year ago <laughs> going, where's the New Zealand protest? Where is it? You know, and I sort of say, look, we can help you market it. I can make graphics for you. I can add you to this list. Um, I, I've been busy making these lists of, of the the previous um, emergency actions that we were sort of planning, and I've made one by continent. We've got one for Australasia. I'm going to tell you the cities that we had planned because um, it's pretty impressive. It's 29 cities, 11 countries. So in Australia, we've got Sydney, Canberra, Hobart, Brisbane, Adelaide, Melbourne. In New Zealand, we've got Auckland, Wellington, and I've just heard someone wanted to do something in Tamaki. <laughs> Um, then we, in Europe we've got Frankfurt, Ljubljana, sorry that's my dog, um, <laughs> Zurich, Paris, Berlin, Sofia, Kathmandu, and in um, Americas we've got LA, San Fran, Washington DC, Baltimore, Toledo, Philadelphia, um, Providence, Phoenix, and then in Canada, we've got Montreal and Toronto. Um, and if you went to my Twitter account, you will see that I've been 
putting the graphics out there with the addresses for each one. And the idea being that um, worst case scenario, if he does get expelled from his asylum in the embassy, that 6 p.m. the following day that everyone will gather at probably the US embassy, but each, each city's got a different site. And then again on the Sunday at noon, um, the following Sunday to try and um, amass a rally, a bigger rally, um, hopefully by that time. Um, and although this is the worst case scenario, we don't want to rely on that. So there's lots of things you can be doing other than that before that happens. But just as an absolute last worst case scenario, there is that fallback position of those 29 cities. And I hope that people will add more and I can happily add them to the graphic. So. Um. Um, I think too that we should just give ourselves a little bit of a pat on the back because what we're hearing out of Ecuador from Jose Rivera, one of the Ecuadorian independent journalists, what we're hearing from there is that Moreno bit off more than he could chew this week. Yeah. That he thought he thought that blaming Julian and WikiLeaks for his corruption scandal, the INA papers corruption scandal, that he would get less attention on him. However, um, the threats to WikiLeaks and to, to Julian, the threats of expulsion, have resulted in the opposite. What it's done is put the INA papers on, they're being cited by media outlets all over the world. It's brought massive international attention to bear. And now we've seen in the last 12 hours, the Ecuadorian um, communications department putting out a statement saying, oh, no, 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 we're definitely not going to expel Julian, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> And it was so it was so fantastic to, for me to see. We created the hashtag hash protect Julian, yeah. and in inside of two hours, it was trending in Washington D.C. and in Sydney. It was trending in the United States as a whole, and in Australia as a whole, and also in Ecuador. It was a tr top trending um, topic in Ecuador. Brilliant. So that that would have absolutely put the shits up them and they wouldn't have seen it coming no. because because we invented the hashtag on the fly and then told everyone to use it, the powers that be were two steps behind on censoring it. Yeah, the and it was fantastic. Got to it yet. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, Whereas if, if we just kept using hash unity for J, um, it would have been totally suppressed. But yeah. because we came up with something brand new like that and pushed it, they, it was fantastic to see how, um, that we actually broke through that censorship barrier. Yeah. And, uh, how, you know, millions, hundreds of millions of people end up influenced as a result. So that was a huge win. Massive well, we one. know that hundreds of millions of people saw the Unity for Day tag in that first weekend, and I have trouble believing that it hasn't been that that mad since. Actually, I think that it's just suppressing the trends, and we know that they do that. I mean, Project Veritas didn't they do an expose on on exactly that the, the 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 gatekeepers of the trends in 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 Twitter? I believe they did, um, and it was quite compelling. Um, they have no shame, <laughs> absolutely no shame. Amazing. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah, and that I was really... one of the big things about your achievement in New Zealand because you also, you broke the mainstream media barrier and you actually got some coverage of the actions that you were doing. And, and that's not easy to do. It takes a lot of persistence. I know that from experience. Well, we've had um, supportive people, you know, the Daily Blog and Scoop, there are supportive press in New Zealand. I mean, they tend to print everything, uh, unless it's directly offensive, they do print everything. And then sometimes it gets picked up. And I think the one that we picked, the one that we posted about the petition and the fact that we were handing over the petition, we had to deal with a, an MP that we didn't really want to have to <laughs> deal with, frankly, because he wasn't interested in the actual cause. He just was supporting it under free press. And we could not believe that there was not a single MP that was willing to sponsor the, MP, the, the the asylum petition out of just human rights and just basic humanity. There, was, there wasn't a single person uh, within the New Zealand government. I mean, there certainly are some ex-New Zealand government people who are now speaking out for Assange, but you never, I mean, Georgina Byers, um, you've got Keith Locke, you've got um, our, our own Paul Bruce, who's an ex-Green Party councillor. There's, there's a number of people who, as soon as they leave politics, they're happy to support Assange, but below me, they just aren't even interested in, in humanity when they're in, in power, which is just, um, it seems crazy, but... 
it is the case it seems um totally so yeah, we, and we finally out. unfortunately we have to we have to move okay. on in a second but yeah. i just wanted to ask you alex i know that you recently saw chelsea manning when she visited new yeah. zealand so i want i wanted to get your thoughts on her um refusal to cooperate with the u.s grand jury uh who's trying to indict wikileaks what are your thoughts on that oh. God, I'm just horrified. I mean, I, I know that she's out of solitary now, um, but she's in the general prison population. Um, and um, we know about torture and disgusting, um, disgusting things that happened while she was in solitary last time. But I just don't know how safe she is in a prison. I, I just can't even, I can't even comprehend how that's going to go. Um, and I, I just, yeah, she's in incredibly brave and I did ask her the question you know could you support Assange I wanted to ask the question I knew what the answer would be but I asked her the question because I wanted that whole audience to know that people's minds were still on Assange and it was a big audience there so I did ask the question and she wasn't able to answer and now that we know what we know now it seems quite clear why she wasn't able to answer because she'd been held under this grand jury ridiculous secret court all this time and uh, yeah she's epically brave and um i was really really happy to have gone and seen her um it was it was great and we supported her outside as well with our hula hoop violining and uh our ridiculous we gave pamphlets out on assange and we just generally had a showing of support for whistleblowers at the embassy theater so uh, we did what we could to um make sure that new zealand knew that we supported her um yeah. <clears throat> right, and I think um, she's taught us all that there is an option. You don't have to be intimidated by these processes and by the system. You yeah. actually can choose non-compliance. Uh, and if everybody refused to comply with these secret courts and secret testimonies, they wouldn't be able to impose them on us at all. Yeah. And it, it, it will take us fostering a culture of non-compliance uh, to begin to dismantle those systems of oppression. It's a wonder why anyone complied with it, actually. I mean, if you think about it, but yeah. Yeah. So um, what can we do? So what's, what's next for Free Assange NZ, Alex? Uh, well, I mean, I guess we're trying to mobilise the masses. I would like to do something at the same time as the Haka is going on in London. I think that a New Zealand counter action at the same exact time or... Uh, yeah, perhaps try and try and get some focus on that here, so we can get it in the press as much as possible. Because I'm not sure how much it will get covered, but um, mm. we know that we know that there will be a few places covering it, but not not the mainstream media. Maybe I mean, who knows? Anything could happen. But yeah, I'd like to do I'd like to do something supporting that. Um, continue working on these uh, world global uh, emergency plans. Um, yeah, and I'm going to keep on talking to the supporters and see um, what we think we can kind of come up with next. I think crazy seems to work in terms of getting the message out. So perhaps we'll do some <laughs> musical or dancing. Perhaps we'll have dancing people <laughs> this time. I don't Watch know. Flash mob. Sure. Flash mob. Yeah, I'll have to figure okay, out how to do thank that. Thank you so, thank you so much for being here, Pleasure. Alex. Um, we're going to cut to just a three-minute music video, and then we're going to be back with Emily Butlin and the other online vigil. Uh, sorry, on the ground vigilers yes. out, outside the Ecuadorian embassy in London. Catch you later, Alex. Catch you later. Thank you.